the common modalities of governance for managing resources and peer-reviewed My name is Pat Mooney. I work with the Accenture Group, and I'm based in Ottawa, in Canada. I love the image of the Commons, and to me, it is—it's—it's it's a frame of, of mind, and it's a frame of reference as well. It's—it's uh, it's the way we should be looking at our planet and, and, and how we function. And what's happening in Rio Plus Twenty, which is really, um, you know, Silent Spring minus fifty, to be honest. Uh, if we really look at, at, at what's happening there, there's three things that are under attack that are really in the commons. The, the, the soils, the seas, and, and the skies. Uh, companies are coming after and governments are supporting their efforts to really gain control of those parts of nature which have yet to be commodified. And our battle, I think, in, in, in the Rio conference in May of 2012 is going to be to, to defend those areas of the commons, to say that now technology cannot take control of the soils, cannot be the, 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 the technology that, that dominates uh, uh, mining and manufacturing and so on, controlled by the multinationals, especially in a place like Africa. Uh, secondly, we're saying that the, 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 the seas cannot be a, a tool or a deposit for our garbage and, and for uh, for uh, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, pardon me, and for greenhouse gases like that. They can't just be, they cannot allow for ocean fertilization and the manipulation of, of, the, of the seas in that way. And finally, we're saying that in the case of also of geoengineering, that uh, we cannot allow that, uh, that a handful of, of countries, a so-called coalition of the willing, uh, in the industrialized north makes the decision for everybody else as to how to cool the planet and how to control the thermostat of the planet. So those are the, the, the major battlegrounds that will, will shape up in, in Rio Plus 20. Another way of looking at it is to say that there's also three other kinds of threats there. What's being proposed by the United Nations, what's being proposed by governments like France and, and uh, Germany as well in the United States to some degree is a proposal that that they will change the whole structure of how we deal with, with, with the environment after Rio Plus 20. We'll change the governance model, who gets to decide how they put together the institutions that will manage the environment and natural resources at Rio Plus 20. That's number one. Secondly, they'll change the kind of regulatory mechanisms that will determine how technologies get transferred from the global south or from the north part to the global south. That will also change. Uh, that means the, the monopoly practices, the intellectual property controls over technology. And thirdly, uh, again, they will be saying or trying to get acceptance of the idea that these new technologies, uh, nanotechnology, synthetic biology, geoengineering, will be the, the tools under which they will manipulate the planet in the future. And they want acceptance to that idea as well. So it's a lot at stake for one conference. They have to be. They don't have much choice, frankly, because this is the last chance. They've got to take it now. They've got to deal with it. They've got to understand there are certain things that have to stay outside of, the, of capitalism, of that kind of marketplace. Uh, we have no choice but to win this battle. And, and I think that the mood has changed, that there is a sense now that, that we need another way, another lens from which we can analyze uh, how the world has to work. The Brazilian government is not ready to help us with this, I don't think. I, I'm really worried that, in fact, they've already made some deals. Uh, I think Brazil and France both want to get out of this, this, uh, this summit, uh, a new world environmental organization. Uh, the only good news in that is they both want to have it in their own country. So Brazil wants it in Brazil, France wants it in Paris, and we'll see who fights out that battle. I think it's a disaster to actually create a highly centralized structure like that. We need diversity in our institutions as much as we need diversity in nature. Um, so I, I think we have a real struggle to convince the Brazilians that, that uh, they have to, to uh, look more broadly at the issues than they have been in the past. It's not just a battle for them to get themselves a United Nations agency. First of all, yes, in civil society, especially in social movements, especially among farmers' organizations like La Via Campesina, and they're very, very strong in Brazil. Uh, we also have allies in Latin America. We have the whole network of, of countries, uh, 
so, it's so much led by, by Bolivia these days with its very strong position on, on defending the, a new charter for the rights of Mother Earth. That, that initiative, I think, is extremely compatible with, with the Commons approach. And, and uh, we see them as very close allies and, and governments with them like Venezuela, like uh, Nicaragua, Cuba, uh, uh, Ecuador and so on together, I, I think, are, are a good network to work with in, in Rio. Well, the, I mean, it seems strange to say this, but, but the reality is that, that when we're coming up to a conference like this, which is a head of state kind of meeting, governments haven't done their homework. And so there's almost a power vacuum. And there's also not clarity by all of the, the various powers as to which side they come down on in some of the issues. So in that vacuum, civil society has a real opportunity to move in and say, here's the governance model that really will work. And it's not the one of centralizing all the power in Paris or something. Um, secondly, here's, uh, here are some of the dangers of these technologies. We must establish, instead of, of simply an acceptance mechanism for technologies, we must establish at the United Nations level a way of saying no to technologies. And I, I think that there's a number of countries that actually do understand that and are prepared to say, yes, we need some kind of inter international convention for the evaluation of new technologies, for example. And that should start to be negotiated following Rio Plus 20. So there's areas, I think, of maneuvering here that, that, in fact, give us opportunities, especially because the United Nations, and especially, in fact, Brazil, some years ago, very strongly supported the idea of civil society having a much more powerful role to play in the UN General Assembly, even in the Security Council. And we think this is the time to challenge Brazil to follow up with what it said back in 2004 and actually go ahead and, and support social movements and having their, a bigger role in, in uh, in the environmental and natural resource issues following Rio Plus 20. There's no better place in the world than the World Social Forum to, to create discussion, to raise new issues, to get consensus, to, to create momentum towards uh, uh, specific objectives. And the timeline makes sense for us as well. We've got a handful of months uh, between now and the Earth Summit and the New Earth Summit, and I think we have a real chance to, to have civil society strongly organize it together. When Rio first was taking place in, in 1992, it, it, it was really civil society off in one corner talking to itself and governments over in another place really making the decisions. I think we've learned a lot in the last 20 years. We know that we've got to be there talking directly with the governments, intervening directly in the negotiations. So I don't think we'll be trapped again into some sort of side discussion. We'll be there in the center of the discussion.